Hello everybody, Frankie Day here for Frankie Day Models. Okay fellas, Wednesday takes my day off. I'm really enjoying myself this wonderful day. I have good news for every one of you fellas. All your prayers. Has been answered. My wife gets come home tomorrow. I prayed, you all prayed, and all our prayers together has come together as one big prayer. And God has brought my wife back to me tomorrow. And uh, I'm very happy. I don't only really don't do this. Shed a tear or two on YouTube. Old men cry too. And uh, I'm glad that my wife is coming home tomorrow. And uh, she, she's doing fine. And she's doing real well. And uh, while I'm working, we're going to have somebody here who can stay. And I'm going to pay these people out of my own pocket to live here with me and my wife, to take care of my wife for her major years until death does its part. And to, to be here to help my wife out when I'm working, because I have to work, fellas, you know. I'm living on three pensions right now, you know, and, uh, and a job. And it takes all that just to keep my head above water and afford to buy these things. So, all's good, all's well. I'm back in the pilot seat again, and, and uh, model building mojo is now kicked in. And I've been working on my F2B brisk fit card kit here. I got this much done on it so far. I got the fuselage done on it. I got to button up this side right here to make it look like this over here. So I'm going to be working on that today a little bit. I'll be in the videos coming up real shortly. I'm preparing this for a model show. You got a paper model show coming up on the 25th this month. It's at the Wright Brothers uh, International Airport here in Dayton, Ohio. So Mr. John Sachs my good friend, I think he was in Ohio too, and uh, he'll probably be there. He's one of our fellow uh, YouTuber, m model, community gentlemen. A very nice man with a very nice smile. I met him once at the at uh, about a year ago at the uh, paper model convention. He was quite amazed at the collections I had, and uh, so that's good to know that got people want to come and see old Frankie Day and. Uh, and his colleagues at the model show. Okay, we're getting back to the shine here. Behind me, I think it's worked best for me, guys, to explain things I've done on this kit. Now, I like these slides. I can thank Brother Bill from uh, Panzerville's Bunker, Panzer Man Bill's Bunker, uh, for inspiring me to show my uh, update build report status recorded here in stills. Okay, uh, we're gonna come over. We're gonna, we're gonna zoom over behind me, and we're gonna take a look at the progress done on this. And I explain things as we go along, and uh, a little show and tell going on too. Little teasers here for the uh, upcoming videos coming up this year, guys. I got a lot coming this way, fellas. It's just now that all all this family stuff with my spouse and and everything, and it's kind of pulling me back away from the bench a little bit. So, like I said, I'm back in the pilot seat now. Flaps up like like Martin says, chocks away, and uh, we're going to the clouds, guys. Okay, we're gonna zoom this bad boy in here and take a look at what Frankie Day's got to show you guys for the progress of this beautiful Kanawashi Type 21 N1K2 Shiden, aka by the Allies, not the Allies, but I suppose as the George, the high altitude interceptor bomber. Okay, there's the kit right here, guys. When I bought, when the kit comes out, this is very old. <clears throat> I bought this. I rightly don't know when this kit first came out, but this is a '70s model. I remember buying this thing at the Mad Modeler Hobby Shop in 1977 with a price tag of 1995. 1995, back in the mid '70s, late '70s, was a top shelf price for any model that you could buy. And at the time, the Japanese were the, uh, they were the killing fields of the 70s. Now it's China. And uh, they, the Japan's produced a lot of great kits. Hasegawa, Bandai, Nishimo, Fujimi. 
and a host of others that, that came out. And they, their kits were very great, and, and they introduced a lot more new precision moldings compared to the domestic type that we're all used to having since boyhood. Okay. Let's get this out a little, more. It's a little bit too high right there. There, that's perfect, guys, right there. That's, that's good. I'm sorry, guys. I mean to fuss this like this. Okay, this is the box it comes out of. It's all Japanese. Structure's Japanese. Everything's Japanese. Okay, in the beginning, I'll prime it inside the fuselage. The plastic of this kit is very thick. I mean, very thick and very strong. It's not brittle, but it's very strong. And it takes a lot of sanding here and there to get this stuff to look right. The kit is actually virtually there's no flash on this kit at all. Now, I like around here on the edges right here, I took the back of a number 11 blade over here. Don't use the cutting edge of the blade, use the back of your number 11 blade when it comes to scraping. You'll want to preserve that edge for your cutting. There's a little bit of flash around the wing root there, so at the back of that blade, I kind of filed it. I noticed this on the, uh, after I primed it, even right across here, you can see. This is all got to be scraped out flush with the bottom of the wing root to the fuselage, so the wing will sit properly. And it's primed right here. We'll go to the next deal here. Here's the engine. There's about uh, 70 parts of this engine so far. Now, this engine ain't done yet. See these little prick points coming out here around the governor ring here? These are wires. They give you tubing. I think they give you about 18 inches of tubing. This tubing plugs in here, and it goes right around the cylinders to the back end. It plugs in behind the, uh, the exhaust ring. These right here, I think you got one tube you come out of here and plugs into here. The same thing over here and to there. But the rest of these go around the behind the, the, uh, the rear cylinder. And uh, and you got exhaust baffles that go on there too, got to be spinning on. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> put this engine in pretty much last of the sub assemblies and do all the plumbing. So right now, this engine is pretty well done at, uh, at the state of construction. It needs to be plumbing with the, with the harnessing wires on there. The tubing that they give you the kit. And the tires are also rubber too, they give you. Very nice rubber. Okay, I primed the uh, the cockpit floor. See, there's like fuel tanks or some kind of a water tank for the, for the engine. Because they're water cooled ejection fuel uh, ejection engines that, that, uh, that the Sato engine had on the uh, on the uh, on the Grand Kanawashi George. Now, there's a question about interior colors. Japanese were like us. Interior colors, in the United States was like a chromatic yellow color. And then went to chromatic green. After chromatic green, it went to dark cockpit green. After dark cockpit green, they went back to hell with it, aluminum. It went back aluminum. Now, Japan, their color scheme was metallic blue. First option, second option, metallic green. Second option. Third option is different types of greens they used. Japanese interior green, wherever they used. And they experimented with different colors too. But in the beginnings, they used blue, metallic blues, and greens. Now, since this aircraft here is going to be the first operation aircraft, this is going to be painted an overall orange color. Instead of the navy, Japanese navy green with uh, aluminum undersides or white. Okay, these are all primed to be ready to paint it. So Frankie Davis makes a paint right now with his airbrush. This was the first option. I decided not to use this. I said, hell with it. I'm not going to use this blue. It's too dark. I don't think it works right. It may be good on hot rods. Or it might be good good, uh, good blue. So I like to go play it safe by using metallic green. Thumbs up. Not for long. There's the engine in close and detail, the other perspective view of it. That's what I'm trying to say, guys. They plug in right across here, and they go right back, and they plug right back in there, too. The harness wires. Of course, this axle spins really freely for the prop to spin. <clears throat> there you go. The grain. Tell it grain. Airbrush. The air uh, jet system right here. And there's the water goes through there. And... Uh, I think that's at your fuel tank, yeah. And that goes your water or something like that, or some kind of a fluid they use for the fuel ejection of the engine and the, and the water cool. 
Uh, this is your I, I, airbrush this aluminum, buff it out, give it a wash of black. Same thing is done right here on the uh, engine mounts, and uh, same thing with the, uh, the washes are done on the cockpit floor. The detail of this thing is. It's okay for what I want to do with it, but if I was going to make a show model out of this, I'd be scratch built everything on this thing. Everything. Well, Frankie Day doesn't do show models in, in uh, competition. I, I, do, I do do competition, but I don't build for show. I just build just, I just build like the way I like to build it. And uh, if I can build for show, I'll build for show. It'll be slow. And I got a little wash here. I got this airbrush metallic green on there. I gave a little wash in there, that set, and I wiped it off real good. Highlighted it a little bit. Nothing special, just a, just how I look at it. I got all the stuff beside here. Radio boxes, uh, instrument panel, the back end of your... Seems to me I could be a supercharger right there, a system or something, I don't know. I write, don't know guys, Frankie Day's pretty dumb without this. This has something to do with either a supercharger or an air intake system. This thing had a fuel injection, water-cooled uh, engine. Rudder paddles in place, and once the fuse is on the side, you ain't gonna see this opening there anyway. So all gave some coats and washers here and there. Oh, those natural seat belts, there's a no. I'm gonna put Mr. Hasegawa inside that job. I think he's looking very nice. I gave you a good pilot with this thing too. Ah, uh, the detail to it is kind of sparse to the pilot. It's kind of <laughs> It kind of puts you in mind of the uh, Ravel F4U 130 second scale Corsair pilots and the pilots that the Ravel used in the 130 second scale range. But this guy here looks more Japanese than, than American, so that's why I'm going to keep him. I'm going to paint him up. I'm going to put him in there and might put a headscarf around him and uh, chase him to be 29. You don't know what old Frankie Day will do. There's more close up work of the engine detail. Once it's buttoned up, you can see none of this stuff, guys. You can see nothing. A model of size leaves a lot of detail. There, it's all buttoned up. I've been doing a little light sanding on there. I've got to add some filler right across through here. After the filler's done, see those seam lines on here? They're going to be rescribed. These are recessed panel lines. I love this. For 1977, they finally get the picture of not having Rosie and River get nuts in overtime by posting a million and one rivets all over the place. You have to sand them down to low relief just to make it look like something. And also it kills, kills uh, uh, adaptability of washes. So anyway, after it's all sanded down and everything, the filler's added. I'm going to petition here and cover all this up, cover all this in here too and there too. I don't, no, no, no paint in here. Give it a prime job. I'm going to start working on the stabilizers and get them done. I'm working on this thing with sub cell. We're going to start working on the wings. I should have this thing done in about a week or two. Uh, it's not very many parts of this thing. It's just a big airplane. There's a lot to look at, a lot to discern, and figure out what you're going to do as you build. And uh, there's the inside, which you, much as you're going to see, all that work I did, you ain't going to see, but we know it's there because uh, it's here live on YouTube. Here I am, happy. Back to smoking now. Wife's out of the house. She'll be back tomorrow. <coughs> and uh, all my turpentines, everything's out in the garage. I have no nothing that's going to blow up in here because I have a lot of commentators, say, a lot of commenters and friends say, geez, Frank, I'm kind of worried about your health at the world after. We well, you, you smoking cigars, all those chemicals around you, afraid the place will blow up, you know. And uh, to me, I'm so carefree when I do that. I'm so used to being around stuff like that, guys. It just comes to me naturally. And I. And I kind of pondered on it, right? So those guys are giving me a little message right here. So I better get this stuff and put it out where it belongs. So it's no longer in view, as you can see, and safe. And I don't have to worry about blowing up. Okay, that's the end of me right there. And this is going to be the end of video number two for the... For the build, uh, for the build of the Shiden. one point four scale Shiden. Okay. I've been messing around with the Ark Royal. I think I posted this on Facebook. And I showed a picture. Put George over here and bring it over here. And that's 
I think on the YouTube I showed you guys a couple of couple of the kits that I got. And I bought these. Now working on the oil right now. I have the hull beaten together and I put a little filler across it. I'm gonna sand it real well. And I'm gonna take a pen vise and I'm gonna start uh, cut up my portholes on here. <clears throat> I'm gonna make a nice wood base like it's sitting on the ways. I'm going to do this for the Royal Navy. This will be, this will be my a build for, a build, uh, for the uh, for the Royal Navy. And uh, the, this is the first time. This is the first English, the first British aircraft carrier I've ever had. And, you know, it kind of very interesting designs. I mean, it's. She was the pride of the of the Royal Navy. I mean, she, her aircraft, the old string bags, the old sword, fairy swordfish. They, they did their job. I can imagine what the Huns said when they seen post World War One biplanes with torpedoes on them, coming at them to drop torpedoes, and they're probably saying, "Are you kidding me? These guys got." Biplanes with torpedoes against Hitler's mighty machine. I'm going to show you, fellas. You never underestimate your foes. Never. We did. December 7th, 1941, woke us up. Never underestimate your foes. Never underestimate them. That's when you run into trouble and the truth comes out. So I'll be farting around this for a while, guys. This is going to be painted dark sea gray, I guess with a wine-colored uh, terracotta waterline on it. And I'm gonna probably do a little, some weathering on it too, using shades of gray. Be a nice little subject, I'd like to build this. This is a nice kit. It's old, 1966. I think it said, yeah, right here. I'll be darned. I remember seeing this back in the 60s. 1966 Airfix products. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, guys. If I came in close like this, I think you'd be able to see. You might be able to. I don't know. Maybe you can. I don't know. Yeah, I think you can. Since it's a high definition camera, you'd be able to pick it up. I bet moving around a lot, be able to see it. I don't know much about these cameras, guys. See? It's old kit. It's old school. And so far, I'll tell you one thing. This thing goes together very nicely. For a kit that was 50 years old almost, it just it goes together about a fuss. Deck goes on real nice. You can paint green on top. I get done with that. I'll do the cock of the His Majesty Royal Navy. HS Hood. This is a nice kit. I cleaned the hull up in this too, so I'll probably be building up. That'd be build coming down. Coming the way, video tubes. I'll work on the shine and I got the F2B going. And I'm gonna get on that B25 over there, get her going. <laughs> I got that big Zeppelin back there. I bet you guys like to see that get going. It will be. Okay, now, just how far I got on the George before we close the video. I got the few shots of button up as per last video, as you can see. All the detail you can't see, but you can see a lot, of, a lot of it pretty much in here. But looking around. But I have it together and then I'll start working on the sub assemblies to get it finished. And uh, we got more videos coming your way, fellas. Okay, guys, this is the conclusion of the. Uh, that didn't want to show. That's about it. That's the conclusion of the second video. Uh, the Kanawashi K1 N2 type uh, Shiden, also known as the George. I'm going to call her George. And uh, so, next video, I should have the wings done. Stabilizers will be glued in peace. The fuselage. All sub assemblies be all done, ready to put together and get, the, get, her, get, get her painted and decaled and put in the box and get her ready for the show on the 25th. Then I'm going to hop on the brisk fit over here and get some leeway done on her. And then I'm going to work on the uh, Arc Royal and hop on that B-25. 
So I got a lot shaking away and Frankie Day's happy now. My mom 